Hiroshi Fujiwara, my god, my idol, my um, somebody that I've kind of looked up to in terms of framing where I want to go in terms of streetwear. This is kind of in terms of goals, right? I'd say DJ goals, obviously, a Gerd Jansen, obviously, a Dixon with Innovation label. Gerd, in terms of just doing running back quietly and running that, a Dixon, in terms of building a complete empire, right? Innovation, muting the noise, um, uh, you know, all those good stuff that he does, right? And then he works for Juara in terms of just like his approach to streetwear and fashion. The fact that he's able to kind of go and sit front row at Miu Miu show and then go and collaborate with Vli Lone and then go and do a collaboration with Hublot and then do a club brand partnership or sponsorship with Starbucks. That's the perfect career for me. That's a, that's a real um, platform to really showcase your expertise in create your expertise in not creativity, but your expertise in art and design. Like, how can you apply your skill set to these different planes, right? It's it's my kind of version. It's I think the streetwear version of. Do you remember that that story that uh, of Kobe Bryant going playing pickup basketball in Rucker Park in the rain and murking everyone, right? The fact that he didn't want to leave, right? That 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 epic story, like like NBA players going to play pickup basketball in in the hood and be like, nah, 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 nah. I know, I know you see me doing the NBA thing where we're protected and there's no fouling and there's no rough play and shit, but I can do this too, right? I can play in, on, all, on all planes. And that's essentially what Hero Shudiro does, right? Starbucks, Hublot, V-Lone, you know, wherever, some under, some something that he hasn't put his name towards. It's just all really perfect. And again, does it all in his, a beat of his own drum. I think he has like, what, three full-time employees or maybe two? Like, such an incredible thing to, like, he was doing, he was doing that kind of independent sort of like, um, outsources design thing before it got trendy right you know because i think the, the person that really blew it up was maybe a kylie with a cosmetic line people started to think oh wow she's doing a whole thing off a laptop with like five employees because most of the stuff has been outsourced right because nowadays you can do that packaging uh shipping logistics operations can just be outsourced to other people you just run it all from a laptop and i guess who else would rather the same sort of thing but i also like the fact that he's able to do collaboration with Nadi. Hey, that's maybe not so much. I'm not seeing any issue, but he's able to do sports wear collaborations with more brands than just Nike, which goes to show, you know, just how well respected he is in the industry. Anyway, my uh, Hiroshi Fujiwara uh, wanking session over. There's a really cool article here from Hypebeast that says he's now re- teasing um, a new Air Force One high that he's designed that looks very much like a Hiroshi Fujiwara shoe. Very Japanese influence, very Tokyo influence, very tasteful. And again, a proper Marmite approach without being garish. That's the thing that I'll, I'm, I'm glad that he does. He'll re-release a Nike All Court, right? Get that from the retro um, archive and re-release it. But then he will just make it in like really basic colorway. So it's up to you to design as a punter, as a consumer. Do I like it or not? He's not going to sell you a colorway based. He's not going to sell you a shoe based on a colorway. Because a lot of shoes can get away with stuff because of the colorways they choose. Like a phone pod is a good example. You you slap any colorway apart from the OGs on the phone posit, automatically it's a, it's a dud. That supreme phone posit, a dud. The OGs, okay. Still not going to wear them, but fine. But any other color on this phone posit is dud because the shoe itself is shit. So... I, feel, I like the fact that he's able to kind of get a good shoe and then tweak it slightly ever so slightly just to kind of make it his own. And this Air Force One is a good example of it, right? So there it is. It's an Air Force One high with Velcro straps, no laces. Who would have saw that coming, right? Uh, again, I think the Air Force One model is a model. I think the shape-wise, I think I remember Celine doing a pair. Do you remember Celine doing a pair of Air Force Ones, right? Uh, from Phoebe Philo's era, Celine Air Force One. It was like an Air Force One shoe. So I think that model is so well loved and so well received and so well liked by most people in the industry because of just the, the chunkiness of it, the versatility of the shoe that everyone's got their own version of it, right? This is the Celine version. I remember coming out a few seasons, a few, well, when Fever Fallow was still there. And it's essentially what you can see from this, which is what I love about design, which is why I need to have my own brand. The fact that we've all had this idea. Like I remember the big thing about Vans back in the day was the fact that they had the piping, right? The piping line, the little blue line that goes around the midsole. And everyone was like kind of trying to color it in or dye it out. And then, um, of course, what happens over time is that once you start wearing a pair of Vans Authentics and you get the foxing off or you uh, take off the piping, you might then think, you know what? I wish the sole was a couple of inches thicker. I wish the insole was like this. I wish the heel tab was like that, the laces, the eyelets, right? And then suddenly now you're making your own shoe and you're putting it out there. And that turns into common projects, right? That's where common projects started from. The idea that these guys wore, would, would they, they work in professional environments where they just want to have one shoe that they can wear day in, day out from meetings to um you know to all hands to client uh briefings to just working day to day 
that's not going to break down and you just make a, a common a, 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 a common project Achilles, right? And suddenly you've got this amazing shoe that lasts forever and people are big fans of it. And I think if you follow iteration of the Air Force One, it's a similar sort of thing, right? So you've taken a, a a classic silhouette, something that you think really works, but just updated it in your, in your way, right? So the paneling has changed. Um, it's like, I don't know what that seam is called when it's not kind of stitched over, sort of like underneath, I'm not sure what that's called, but really luxe leather. I think the sole has been thickened ever so slightly, or maybe the insole or the instep has kind of been sunken deeper to kind of give it the impression that it's a bit of a thicker sole. And again, just a very classic shoe with the strap on it, works really well. And I'm assuming this did really well for the company when they when they sold them at the time. And Eros Fedura has done the same sort of thing with the Air Force One. He's taken a shoe that he think works really well for his kind of personal style and just updated it ever so slightly. So maybe he's kind of... And again, maybe for the most part, if you listen to Eros everything's all matter-of-factly. Or everything's all matter-of-fact. So it might just be that he just, he's getting older now and he doesn't want to keep having to relace his shoes. So he just made a... Sh- and, and the shoe that he wears more often than not is an Air Force One day-to-day. And he just made this incredible shoe, which has... The inside swoosh has sort of been unpicked in there, so just the outline of it. You've got the essential um, fragment heel tab with the Thunder logo on the back, and then you've got three straps here in the front. It looks like the toe box has been changed slightly too. There's a little kind of mud guard here in the front, a little kind of clipping, which is different than most Air Force Ones, but again, it looks fucking beautiful, man. I'm a big fan of it. Again, I think if Velcro shoes have got a bad rep in Europe or in the UK or in other places... Right, people have like quite, you know, people kind of ascribe the R word to Velcro shoes, but I think any other any other place, people see Velcro shoes as like a real big convenience, right? The fact that you can wear something and just slip it on without the hassle of having to kind of relace them is quite advantageous. Um, but yeah, what a what a great idea for a shoe. Again, considering that Hiroshi Fujiwara has a key to the Nike archive, and he can do whatever the fuck he wants. The fact that he does this is just really, really incredible. Like super confident in his uh, ability to. Uh, ideate to create and all to connect to people and in terms of like selling shoes um again maybe not selling shoes because I, I don't think if you're Hiroshi you get into this stuff to like oh, i want to sell out you just want to make a shoe that you think you vibe with and hopefully it's going to contribute something to the scene isn't it because you look back at all these stuff he's done with h or he's done with fragment they've all been wins in it for the most part there's not been one dud in there i don't think um so yeah big shoe no idea when it's going to come out actually there's no date on there but again, I'm loving it, man. I think it looks bloody amazing. Big, big fan of it. So big up HF for that shoe. Can't wait to see when that drops very, very soon. Hopefully soon enough. Um.